How far do rugby players run in a match? The development of GPS and match analysis led to have more and more knowledge on physical data, and in general to have the possibility to generate any kind of data. Understanding the physiological load of players according to their position is necessary to develop a sport-specific training protocol. Therefore, match analysis are helpful to develop a specific training program which mimics the physiological condition imposed by the games. So, what are the physical demands of individual single players? The authors of this paper provided an answer. The participants of this study were players from the English Premiership of the same club in the season 2002-2003 and 2003-2004. and The study was made from November to February, which no rain fell during the matches analyzed. The data were collected through time motion analysis with five cameras around the pitch as in the picture. The participants were divided into wingers and fullbacks, outside elves and centrals, probes and seconds rows, and hookers and back rows. Scrum alphas were excluded from the analysis due to the limit sample and unique physical demands of the position. The physical activities were divided into standing non-purposeful movements, walking, jogging, medium intensity running, high intensity running, and maximum speed running. Also, the time spent by the players were studied and the activity categories were divided into low intensity activity and high intensity activity. The results show that the backs cover more distance than forwards through the course of the match. Much of this difference is due to the backs walking, while the greatest distance covered by any position group during sprinting was 280 meters by the outside backs. They cover more than twice as much distance than inside backs. Here the table from the research to see also the mean of seconds. The results of the total time show that the forwards spent a greater percentage of time in high-intensity activities than the backs. Although the backs spend more time performing high-intensity running than the forwards, the difference in high-intensity activities was mainly due to the forwards spending a greater portion of time in statistic action than backs. As a proportion of the total time spent in high-intensity activities, the backs spend 58% and 42% of time in running activities and static actions. And the backs spend more time walking than forwards, while the outside backs walk it for a greater proportion of the match than inside backs. No differences were observed between tight and loose forwards for the amount of time spent in any activity. Here at the table from the research to see also the mean of seconds in more details. And finally, the total distance and total time were compared between periods of match. When the first and the second half were compared, no differences were observed for the total distance covered. Further, the results found that the first 10 minutes compared with a period of 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 minutes and higher distances covered. There were no differences between the total average or maximum time spent in high intensity activities when a static action over the periods. To conclude, this study made an overview in different positions of physical demands in rugby. To take in consideration the fact that the study looked into matches played in England, the four other competitions might have different data. If you would like to know more about this topic, you can find related research in the description below. Also, if you feel that you found the video useful and you would like to help me in growing with the content, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below about your favorite research. Thank you for watching and goodbye!